I started to feel very happy and I was smiling for no reason. Like I went for a walk in the park and I was just smiling at everyone. And I am quite a happy-ish person, but not that happy. It's almost like I couldn't contain the joy. Giving up 10 days of your life to meditate isn't easy. A lot of people, when they hear silent meditation, they go, oh my God, I can't stay silent for 10 days. But let me tell you that silence is like the least of your problems when it comes to your chattering mind. I wanted to make a video because I found so many videos helpful to me when I was looking at doing a Vipassana. Actually, when I did my first Vipassana, I didn't watch any videos and maybe that's a great way to do it, not to know anything and to just experience it. My first 10 day Vipassana, I did maybe 15 years ago and it was amazing. I had to write like an MBA dissertation straight after and I could sit for a few hours maybe eight or nine hours just get up for a toilet break or a snack but my mind was completely undistracted peaceful equanimous the downside of vipassana is it can be like quite hard it can be quite dry and you have to be disciplined to be able to sit down and feel your sensations and you're required to meditate for at least an hour in the morning an hour in the evening to try and keep the benefits of your 10 day silent retreat. I always failed at that. Like I could do a 10 day retreat. I could stay silent. I could follow all the rules. I had a really good retreat. And then I fell off the bandwagon as soon as I got home. So I found this other style of meditation, which has really worked for me. And it's called Tranquil Wisdom Insight Meditation. I found out about it from Guru Viking who has like a YouTube channel and he interviewed somebody called Delson Armstrong. I've never heard of somebody that can meditate to such high levels. And I was like, wow, what did he do? How did he do it? And can I get there? Maybe I can. Rather than explain what TWIM is, because I'm not a meditation teacher, I'm just going to talk to you about my experience. If you love Vipassana, you know, Vipassana is amazing. You have to try the meditation style that works for you. And once you find a style, stick with it. There's no like perfect meditation. So maybe even with TWIM there are downsides. I haven't found any yet. I'll tell you the things that I found that are good about TWIM, but I'm not trying to criticize any other meditation technique. You have to follow what works for you. You have to follow your own inner intuition. So the whole focus of TWIM is when you meditate, you focus the object of your meditation instead of being breath or sensations is the feeling of joyful or wholesome states. Not necessarily joyful, but wholesome states. So the object of meditation for Vipassana is sensations. Initially, it starts with breath, uh, with Anapana meditation, and then moves on to sensations. The object in TWIM are these qualities, Brahma Viharas, are uh, wholesome states of the mind, which actually feel really pleasant and quite fun. Like you look forward to sitting and meditating because my first experience when I started to generate feelings of loving kindness was that my body would feel this thing called pity, which is like lots of like pleasant vibrations, like bubbles across your body. And sometimes I would even wake up with pity on my legs and on my arms and it felt really good. And apparently pity also has like this cleansing quality when you meditate with loving kindness, which basically means, you know, you generate loving feelings towards yourself and to other people. And at some point, even towards your enemies, to all beings. It really feels good because, I don't know, you're sharing good stuff with the world. You're sharing good stuff with yourself and it feels nice. It feels nice is an understatement. It feels amazing. And loving kindness feels very good because you're sharing, you know, may all beings be happy. May I be happy. May I be filled with joy. May I be filled with peace. May all beings be filled with peace. This feels good. It feels good to sh share like your love and your peace and your good feelings with others. All beings, including your enemies. It's really not a problem. The first thing that I noticed that got me really sold on the meditation was that I started to feel very happy and I was smiling for no reason. Like I went for a walk in the park and I was just smiling at everyone. And I am quite a happy-ish person, but not that happy. It's almost like I couldn't contain the joy and my joy was like my smile was just a natural thing. And I thought, ooh, this is interesting. This feels really good. I must investigate. And so I signed up to a 10 day online meditation course, which is really easy. So you go onto the website. I'll, I'll put all the links below and you sign up, you pay $25, which is a donation. It's beautifully guided. Even though the teacher isn't present, I had to fill in a Google form and I could document what was going on for me. And then the teacher would give me guidance. And there were videos that they sent to you, which you could follow along. And I didn't always manage to meditate every day, or I didn't actually like watch all the videos because I was also working, which you're not supposed to do, but I couldn't take time off. So I was meditating two hours a day. And then by day five, day six of the 10 day, 
I was meditating maybe three hours, three and a half hours because it just felt so good. Like I could see some progress. So uh, with Twim, there are these jhanas that the Buddha talks about. And again, I'm not going to go into the philosophy of it because I'd rather you just learn from the people who are teachers who are qualified to talk about this. But yeah, to somebody who's goal oriented like me, like naturally I, I like to know where I am and like to know that I'm making some progress and to see some results. You could see the progression with the jhanas and it happened quite fast. I love that because I heard about Twim through the Guru Viking podcast. There was this teacher called Delson Armstrong who I wanted to learn with and he was going to be in India in October of 2022. So like I had no desire before that to go to India or to do a retreat but somehow it's like life seized me and I found myself booking a flight and making these plans and telling one of my close friends to also come on the retreat and somehow she also felt like saying yes and we made our way to Nagpur which was incredible. It wasn't very silent. India is a magical, magical country, but silence is sometimes difficult in, in a place like India, which is just so populated. Delson couldn't make it because he was sick. Haha, -ha. lots of things went wrong. I found out that the retreat uh, place where we were going to meditate was newly constructed. So there were some challenges with sound. It didn't have a lot of furniture. The acoustics of the building were what it was. And on day one, day two, I kind of freaked out because I was expecting silence. And these 10 days were very very important to me I had literally like blocked out days from work I had to arrange you know for a backup plan for someone to attend to my clients if something came up and those 10 days were really valuable to me so I was longing for silence in any case the monk reminded us that our only job was meditation and whereas in Vipassana I was used to like making it to one hour as a big achievement there were people sitting in the meditation hall for two hours two and a half hours three hours and that was tough in the beginning for me because of the sounds. Now the beautiful thing about the sounds are like pressure cooking sounds and mixer grinder sounds because the cooking kitchen was right next to the meditation hall like a few yards away. I realized how much of an aversion I had to sound. So the monk would always say, you know, the things that come up in meditation when you're meditating, the things that annoy you and frustrate you are beautiful to see because they show you what's going on in your mind and these are hindrances. So mine tended to be like just frustration, wanting things to be a certain way. And I had such an aversion to noise, to sound, like I really crave silence when I'm meditating. I'm happy to report that after the 10 days, that was gone. When I meditate now and there's noise, it's just noise, it's become new and that is actually very cool and very freeing though I wouldn't voluntarily want to meditate in a noisy place with pressure cooker sound I'm glad that I went and I'm glad that I had that experience the other thing was that the monk there was a monk called Pante Ananda and he was very cool Canadian like surfer dude turned monk and he had just spent a year in isolation in Sri Lanka so he had you know all the glow of that meditation isolation and then he must have been in a state of shock to come and teach a retreat to 30 plus people in India but he handled it very well he was very inspiring to watch you could see compassion and love flowing from him he walked barefoot he wore monk robes and he also begged for alms every day at 11 in the morning. He wasn't very good at timekeeping, but you know, when you're awakened, maybe like time is not something that's so important to you. I really enjoyed most of all his explanation of the suttas. I'm not really religious, but I think the Buddha was very wise. For me, Buddhism is really, as the monk explained, the science of liberation. So it's not really a religion. It could be called a philosophy. Some people might adopt it as a religion and that's fine. Hearing the monk share the suttas live and being able to ask questions and sometimes the monk would actually read a sutta and make us close our eyes and meditate to the sutta it was just quite magical so that part of the experience I loved. So in Vipassana, they kind of encourage you to sit on the floor, cross-legged in twim because you're sitting for much longer sits because the mind can drop into more sort of concentrated or calmer states. They encourage you to sit for longer and so they don't mind if you pick a chair and pick you know as many cushions as you like and so it was really comfortable but I still noticed that I had like a lot of shoulder pain which I usually do anyway maybe it's because I spend too much time on computers sometimes that shoulder pain interestingly was psychological pain I could focus on the shoulder pain melt into the sensation and it would sort of go away when I wasn't fighting the pain that happened towards the end of the retreat I did enter some very calm and peaceful and pleasant and expansive states where I couldn't feel my body and that was very cool I don't 
don't want to talk too much about those experiences because it becomes sort of like a comparison of my experiences versus yours. But the jhanas are incredible and really beautiful and you really experience in your body the states that the Buddha talks about, the four Brahma Viharas. So loving kindness, equanimity, joy. If you do the TWIM online meditation retreat, you will learn about those. The other thing that they talk about quite a lot is the hindrances, so anger, aversion, hatred, greed. We are always, when we go through life, and I realize I didn't say all five of them, but you know, you'll, you'll learn from the masters, not from me. The other most important and cool thing about TWIM is that they teach you the six hour technique, which is a way of allowing thoughts to arise in your experience, but not going with them into their stories and into the content of the thought, but just releasing them. So it's like this very Aikido style, being with it, but not fighting it, but not staying with it, just sort of dancing with the thoughts and releasing them. And over time, the mind, you know, enjoys staying in the calm and peaceful states much more and becomes more and more willing to release the thoughts. And so it starts to happen like very fast and automatically almost sometimes. So the highlights of my twim were just experiencing the jhanas, experiencing like a quite rapid progression, a pleasant way of meditating, a way of meditating that felt very happy and joyful. And when I came back, I asked my husband, because you know, the proof is always in, do the people that live with you notice the change? And he said that I became more relaxed, which is good. Oh yeah, we learned about dependent origination, which is a very, very amazing topic. We also took the precepts every day. And there were some things that like, you know, I wasn't so into, like the bowing, um, when the monk came for arms, which was a very beautiful experience to watch. At times, like I had tears in my eyes, just the humility of the monk coming with his bowl and the love of the people there that wanted to put food in his bowl and wanted to be generous was very touching. But of course, you know, I didn't feel comfortable like prostrating on the ground and things like that. Like that's just not how I like to be. So I would bow and show my respect. And nobody asked me to, to prostrate or nobody ex made expectations from me. And the monk was also like very cool. One day, I think I put food in his bowl and I was still wearing my slippers. And another woman said, hey, like, you got your slippers on, take them off. And he was like, it's okay, it's okay. One of the biggest highlights for me, besides, of course, the meditation, was being able to observe the monk, who was very loving, very compassionate. And on the last day, he actually said, if I have unconsciously said something that hurt you, or inadvertently, I don't know the exact words, but he basically said, Please forgive me if, you know, my words have landed in a way that has hurt you. It was really sincere when he said it and it was so beautiful, such a beautiful practice, like clearing any hurt that may have landed on the participants. It would be very cool if, if we could ask for forgiveness more easily and, you know, accept that sometimes we hurt other people without even meaning to or trying to. It's just how it is. So, would I recommend you try TWIM? Yes, if you're drawn to it. The monk said that he tried many, many, many different kinds of meditation and he settled on TWIM and it wasn't perfect, but it was one of the best kinds of meditations he's tried. And Bhante Vimala Ramsey, you can check him out on YouTube, but he's the person who came up with the TWIM meditation teachings and they are based on the suttas and you know rock solid and your experience is really the best feedback so if you want to try it give it a go i would recommend trying the 10-day online meditation retreat and if you really like it then you can book a 10-day live meditation retreat and then they also have like advanced 10-day online retreats in fact i'm starting a 10-day online advanced retreat tonight i hope that was useful that was a lot of words but I'm so happy when I meditate and it's so easy now for me to do it every day. I might not always do two hours a day. The monk did say, the longer you can sit, the better. Like rather than doing two one hour sits, it's better to sit for two hours to allow your mind to go into those deeper states. Anyway, I wish you luck and may you be happy. Thank you for listening.